Nothing's theorem. Okay, welcome to another episode with King Solomon and because um, today we are going to be talking about Norton's theorem. Okay, so the Norton's theorem states that a linear circuit connected between two terminals can be replaced by a Norton's current in parallel with a Norton's resistance. So the Norton's current is the short circuit current between the two terminals and the Norton's resistance is the resistance seen from the two terminals when all sources have been deactivated. And the reason why Norton and Kevin brought this theory respectively was that you see ketchups if you are to do catch up, you are going to find all the current going through even some path that we don't require. So Kevin in and Norton did their theory so that they can help us find maybe the voltage across a particular resistor, the current across a particular resistor, or any other thing. But you won't have to tackle the whole circuit and find the other current that you don't need. That's why they brought this theory. So as my brother writes fully did with Kevin in, and I hope you watch that video over and over again and you are fine with it. Today's one is the easiest if you understand Kevin. In. So if you don't understand Kevin, in, please spend much time watching that video and I know you'll be okay with that. So in Kevin, in Norton, in Terminal, my brother told me that you need BTH and RTH. But in Norton, we need IN and RN. But one thing that links Norton to Terminal is that if you really understand Terminal and you can find BTH and RTH with it, the RTH is the same as the RN. The RTH is the same as the R, and the IN is the same as VTH over RTH. So this is basically what I will tell you. There is the normal Norton procedure in doing it. That one you go through catch off, and there is. The Kevinian approach in tackling Norton's theory. That is what our class will be based on. So we are going to first find Kevinian voltage and Kevinian resistance. If you get those two indirectly, you've gotten Norton's resistance. And if you get Norton's resistance, you can easily get Norton's current. And Norton's current is given by VTH over RTH. So we are going to solve this first using the principle I've given to you right now. So let's go. The question asks us to find the current going through this stereo resistance. So using Thevenin's approach to solve Norton's theory, we will first open the stereo resistance. After opening the stereo resistor, you'll find VT. So let's find VTH. How do you find VTH? You will take your loop. Since this side is open, when you are distributing your current, if this is I or I, I will go through only this part. So you are going to get, let's take our loop. It touches negative base. We are getting minus 42. Then it is in the same direction with this. You get plus. 12i. When it gets here, it can go to this side simply because of this open circuit. And this open circuit, no current will flow through this one, but current will be flowing through only this. So we have plus plus i is equal to there. So you end up getting 18 i is equal to 42. So you divide by 18, 18. 6 goes here, 3. 6 goes here, 7. So you are getting 7 on 3. So since we are 7 on 3, to be our i, 
i is equal to 700. Now, we can get 10 remains voltage by taking this loop. So you treat this as a voltage source. So by treating this as a voltage source, if we take this loop, you see that this one, the current was coming through it this way. So it is opposing. So you get minus 6i. Then it will touch positive, which is plus 35 volts. Then the VTH, the VTH is non-polar. So it can take either minus or plus. It is based on you. But in this case, I can say let it be plus VTH. Or let it be minus VTH. It doesn't matter. It just, if I bring here minus here plus, that one is my choice. So you, if you do yours plus, it doesn't mean you are wrong. It's correct. It depends on our color. So, and everything must be equal to zero. So, turning VTH there and putting I inside, you get 6 times 7 over 3 plus 35 is equal to VTH. 3 and 1, 3 and 2, 14. 14 and this, you are getting minus 14 plus 35. It's equal to VTH. And your VTH is equal to 21 volts. So as soon as you get your VTH to be 21 volts, now the only thing we are left to find is the RTH. And when you were teaching, you said the RTH, how do you find that? If you want to find RTH, you short all voltage sources. So you short the voltage source. Now that we have that, so we can withdraw. Now we short the voltage sources. So if you short the voltage source, and you have this as a opening circuit to look into, you know if the current is going from this side, it was this way. It means this twelve and six are in power. So our Rn, which in other words we call RTH, will be equal to 12 in parallel with 6. And 12 in parallel with 6 is like 12 times 6, all over 12 plus 6. So you get 4 ohms. So if you have 4 ohms, how can you get IA? We, we are doing nothing. So how can we get our I? To get I n, I n is given by V T H over R T H. And this is 21 over 4. So we have 21 over 4 amps. And our R n is also equal to 4. So at the end, this is the most important part. We want to use Norton. Norton's equivalent circuit is different from Thevenin's equivalent circuit. Norton's equivalent circuit is given by a current source. And you have a resistance. Two resistors in parallel. So this is our RM which in this case is 4. And this is the one we removed. The one we removed was 3. And this is our IN. is 21 or 4. So you are going to do current division here. You want the current moving through this resistor. R. We want R. So if you want to add, we are going to do current division. And remember from the previous episode, I told you if you want the current through this array, you pick the opposite resistor, which is 4, over the sum of the two resistors. 
you get four plus. So we are looking for I. So you will pick four over four plus three times times the I A. That's our total carry. So we have twenty one over four. So this four goes away with this four. That's a sub. Seven you change one, get I is equal to three amps. And if you remember, you saw this example with you using Kevin, and you had minus three, and that one was based on the polarity. But after using the alternator, you see that we ended up with the three amps, just like Kevin did. So this is what Norton is saying. So as I said, the most important thing is understanding terminate. If you understand terminate and you can do terminate and you get terminate voltage and terminate resistance, terminate resistance is the same as Norton's resistance, as I said here. And Norton's current is given by terminate voltage over terminate resistance. If you get that, the rest is just current division. So this is the only part that makes it Norton. The last aspect, which takes not even less than two minutes to do. Okay, thank you for being with us on this episode. See you next time.